It's such a privilege to be here in the studio with uh, Eric Gilmore. Welcome, Eric. Thanks, man. Eric has written this book, Burn, Melting into the Image of Jesus. And uh, we started talking about your book and the revelation that God has given you. And the revelation that, that um, gave you the desire to write this book. Now, since then, I have read a little bit. And it is full of revelation. I tell you, I got on my knees after reading um, about maybe 20 pages. It, it was awesome. Now, anyone... Who, uh, who will call in and give any donation to Gospel Channel of any amount, we are going to send this book to you for free. If you'll call the number on your screen, Eric Gilmore came in and he said, I will give my book to who, whoever will support the Gospel. So if you will plant your seed in Gospel Channel, we will use that seed to reach souls and we will send you this book, Burn melting into the image of Jesus for free. And uh, I just want to ask you this question because I believe it's important that, that we use our finances for the gospel and that we use our finances uh, on our spirit man. So I just um, would urge you to call in and uh, get this book. And I know that a lot of people have been waiting for you to come back. So thank you for, 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 for being with us, Eric. We just appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Now, last time we were talking about why we need Jesus, mm -hmm. how the soul is spinning mm -hmm. around, and, and why when we, we go into prayer, it can feel, we, we can be so distracted that every time we try to, 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 to calm ourselves and still ourselves, that can be hard. And, and you were making a great point right as the feed went out. So I want you to make that point again. The reason that I think that this subject is so important is so many of us want to seek God. We want to be close to the Lord. But yet, there's so many that once they, they, they shut that room and they're all alone, they get distracted. They start thinking about life and troubles. And Eric, what's the key? to get into the presence of the Lord when, when your soul is spinning. Please, please explain what you told us last time. Oh yeah, for sure. Well, um, I think that the hardest thing for us is this issue that we're talking about right now. Because if you go down the list of anything that can happen in the Christian life, mm. everything that God does is out of rest. Mm -hmm. Everything. So if He's going to act through you, it's going to require that you're at rest. Wow. And the reason why is, is because, I mean, God, He dwells in the seventh day. Hmm. You know, the seventh day is the day of rest, and that's where He lives. And we need to join Him in that day. Every okay. time that I, every time I find Him, he's, he's resting. Wow. And when I join Him there, His finished victories become mine. And so when somebody goes alone to pray, and they don't know why they can't experience the Lord, I think the heart of the issue is rest. Wow. A lot of people, they're, they're so, when I say rest, well, let me clarify what rest means. Rest is when the soul chooses to subject itself to the Lord in worship and adoration and surrender. Wow. So if I choose to spend time with the Lord and I think that that spending time with the Lord is reading a bunch of scriptures or praying my prayer list or saying a bunch of stuff uh, to God or just trying to punch the time clock, whatever... It's not alive until I rest. Hmm. Because when I rest, then I plug into the divine principle of the kingdom of God, which is death for life. When I go down into death, He breathes on my dead body and makes it come alive. And so what I mean by that is, there I am. I get in my prayer closet, and the first thing that I do is make sure that I lean into a nothingness, which is, Lord, here I am. I, I'm not here to ask you for anything. I'm not here to pray for anybody. I'm not here to read. I'm not here to study. I'm not here for any other reason, my God, than to just adore you and to love you. And I begin to say, Lord, I worship you and I bless your name. 
There really is nothing like you. When all these other vacuums of the soul get shut off, then we can find His sweetness. And when His sweetness begins to flow and we drink it and allow it to come in, it, it literally does everything for us. You know, mm. he, he performs the work Himself. Oh. And so a lot of people have a hard time in prayer because they're too active. But if we'll rest, God will do it. Wow. It's like my, my friend Michael likes to say, true prayer is, is God doing all things Himself in a sense. It's like God coming through, letting God in and letting God through. This is the Christian life. The inflow produces an overflow, produces an outflow. There's, it's no different with prayer. Prayer is divine precipitation. Mm. The rain falls down onto the ground. And the water wants to get back to the height from which it has fallen. Mm. But it can't by itself. It has no power. But if the sun will shine down on it, it will evaporate back up to the place from whence it fell. Wow. And that's, that's divine prayer. That's wow. divine interaction with God. So yeah, if there's somebody out there and you're having a hard time praying, stop trying. and Just go in with one agenda. I just am here because I want to be with you. I told a group the other night that if your prayer time is going into the room and sitting there with a big smile on your face, you're doing a great job. Because it's not about what you can do. Hmm. It's about being with Him. Wow. I said last time that the uh, laying upon His chest, that's, where the, that's the best place because that's where rest Tell us about is that. found. Well, you know, Psalm 131, David says, I've stilled and quieted my soul like a weaned child laying hmm. upon its mother's breast. A weaned child is, is significant because a weaned child has a choice not to be there because hmm. it, it needs to be there. It can get up and run around. And that's what your soul's like. It can get up and run around anytime it wants to. But when you choose by your own will to lay upon the chest of the Lord and just be there to worship Him and to experience His presence and hear His voice with no other agenda, then we plug into hmm. that sweet divine flow. It's like, a, it's like a river. It really is like a river. And if, you've, if you go into a river and you step into the river and the river's pulling you with a current, if you dig your toes into the ground, you know, you can resist. But if you'll lift your toes out of the ground and just allow the river to be the river, it will take you. And that's exactly what the, 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 the prayer life that is spiritually significant actually is. In Ezekiel, it actually says that the, wherever the river flowed, it caused the life mm. to come. And that's exactly what it's like. If the river isn't flowing, there's no life. Mm. But if you'll rest, then the river will take you right into life. You know, it hit me the other day in First John. He says he died so that we would have life through him. And I looked up the word that he chose to use for through, and it actually means to go into and out from. Oh. Man, that's the secret. This oh. is why he died, is so that you could go into him mm. and proceed out from him. Man, this is the Christian life. This is sonship. Jesus said, I do nothing on my own initiative. Mm. He says, only those things that my Father tells me to do, these are the things that I do. I speak, I don't speak on my own initiative. Mm. I speak what you have told me to speak. Uh, he, he crucified His own initiative and let the divine initiative take place. And the reality is, is, there's only one way into the divine initiative, and that's the death of your own initiative. Oh. Yeah, And that's the same way with prayer. So, sorry to go so long on that. No. No, 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 there is no, no need for moderator here. <laughs> so you're saying that the reason why, um, particularly if we take this from an angle of ministers, yeah. you're saying that when ministers get into a place of unrest, yeah. then when they seek the Lord, that's why, because I, 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 don't, I, I don't believe that the people of God are not trying to seek God. You know, I believe that a lot of people have given up on seeking God. You know, that's really not um, a, a revival message, I know that. But it's just, it's just the truth. But what you're saying is we need to still ourselves yeah. and calm ourselves. And that's why I emphasized last time that the scripture, be still and know that I am God, that we cannot know Him before we are still. That's so interesting, but when the Lord uses us, because I feel right now that we have a lot of ministers watching, 
when the Lord uses us, we get busy. And we get busy because we're busy with doing the things that the Lord has put on our path. Mm -hmm. it, it's not easy to still ourselves. Right. How do you do it? How do you do it, Eric? Well, <laughs> the soul is the mind, the will, and the emotions. And that's what's spinning. Mm -hmm. That's what's active. It's funny because those things that God has in, in our spirit man, but in order for them to become intelligible mm. and to actually come into our life, they have to pass through the medium or the translator of the soul. Mm. So in other words, God may be speaking something to you and you're like, man, I know God is, he's saying something to me. I just don't know what it is. It trickles down into the mind and then you get an intelligible understanding of that indelible impression that he gave you. Mm. So it's the same way with the emotions. I feel something from the Lord, but until it trickles into the soul, you can't really identify what emotion it is. And the same way with uh, the will. And I'll tell you what, you can will all you want to obey the Lord. Mm. But until that will is laid down, you won't get the, the quickening that, for that, the will. That, yeah. that, hit that one more time. Yeah. You're saying our will... Even to pursue the Lord, yes. if we don't lay that will down. Right. Yeah, because God has not ceased to be an all consuming fire. It's just He's looking to bear in altars. So He'll send His fire, but He'll only send His fire where there's something on the altar. Your will on the altar, He won't light it up with the substance of Himself. Our God is a consuming fire, and He wants to light you ablaze with Himself. But the issue is, is that if we won't lay it down on the altar, He won't send His fire. And so it is with the stillness of the soul. The stillness of the soul really is so that God would illuminate us. So that we would be quickened by divine power. Mm. So that God's very own substance would flow in and He would get glory through our life. Because the only thing that pleases God is what He does Himself. Wow. It's not what we can do for Him. Wow. It's what he himself does. Wow. And so when man ceases to be some type of an elf that tries to serve God and bring things to the Lord and becomes a lifeless conduit through which the life of God can flow, wow. then he's, he really plugs into the Lord. And so this is, what's, this is why stillness is so significant. Wow. Because if you don't get still, there's no inflow. Hmm. Which means there'll be no, you'll know, you won't know what the Lord is doing. You're not connected to mm. him. The soul is the connector. So if you still yourself, it hit me the other day that the reason why the devil attacks stillness is because if he can get to your stillness, then he'll get to your experience. If he gets to your experience, he'll get to your relationship. If he gets to your relationship, he harms the source of life, of joy, of peace, of direction, of guidance, of, of the sweetness of his presence. He gets right to the issue. So the issue is stillness so that you can experience His presence. Why, why am I harping on experience? Because the reality is, if your relationship with God has no experience in it, then really all you have is loyalty to an idea. But when you get the experience of the Lord, then you have interaction with Him, and this is a relationship. I don't have a relationship with my wife through a picture. I have to have a relationship with my wife through the experience of her. The reality is, is that God is a person who wants you to experience Him. And so stillness is the key to being able to touch Him and, and be able to have Him flow in so that that relationship can be fostered by the glory. You know the Bible tells us clearly that there's only one route to the image of Jesus Christ. And that route is shown to us in two really clear spots in 2 Corinthians 4, 6 and 3, 18. You'll see the Bible tells us that the reason why God even shone light into your heart was to give you the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. You've got to see Jesus. If you want to go to the next place, if you want to be conformed to His image, being conformed into His image is a consistent beholding of His face. The scripture tells us in 2 Corinthians 3.18 that we behold Him and be conformed into His image from glory to glory. So that glorious experience of His presence 
prepares you for the next place of the experience of His presence. Which all of these going into Him's are creating a newness of His image inside of you. There's no way to begin to look like Jesus without the experience of His presence. That's what the glory is. It's the substance, the tangible, undeniable substance of God being experienced in your life. That's what the glory is. And the reason why He has shown light into your heart is so that you would experience the glory of God. And it's in the face of Jesus Christ. All men have fallen short of what? Mm. The glory. Mm. He wants you. He wants you to experience Him. And I tell you this, if you're Christianity, and I say this with all the humility in my heart and, and tenderness, and, and if your relationship with God is one that it doesn't have an experience of Him, that I encourage you to come to Jesus. Because He is a blessed, flowing river of, of life that is a continuous, all-sufficient, glorious, overwhelming mm. pleasure and satisfaction. It was A.W. Tozer who said, Our God is a shoreless sea of pleasure. That's exactly mm. what He is. Wow. Well, I, I, I just know that it's, it's not by accident you're watching. Um, what, 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 what Michael brought now, now Eric is bringing, because I believe when you touched the subject, you said that God can be speaking through us, uh, to us, and, and, and we, can, we can know that God is trying to say something, mm. but we might not know why, because we're not still, because it does not penetrate. Um, you see, before we went on the show, I told you, that I felt in my spirit that a lot of ministers are watching. And it's funny, even though that you ended this in a salvation message, even though you are talking about the high levels and how we fall short of it in a very practical way. Yes. Because it's not that, that pastors are not seeking. It's not that his, his, his people are not seeking him. It's just we're basically messed up. But, but, but it's really not funny because people come out of that secret place crying because they did not get to meet him because of distraction. And so, so I just believe that, that people tune in as a last desperate resort. And what you're telling them is, is life-giving. Yes. Continue. What you're talking about right now is, is huge to me because, you see, I'm just, I'm just a ditch digger. That's what I was doing, was digging ditches and picking up trash. That's what I was doing. And praying in the Holy Ghost. And pounding fences in the ground. That's what I was doing. Experiencing His presence in the midst of a construction, devil-infested atmosphere. And His presence was with me. Mm. So I'm not, I'm, I'm not like a world-traveling uh, minister. Mm. I just am somebody who can put in a silt fence and dig a ditch and love Jesus while doing it. I believe that in heaven when I, when I go stand before Him, that He's going to have a little room. Hmm. And in that room He's going to have little things that mean something to Him and I. Hmm. He wants to show them to me one day. And I think in there will be a trench and shovel. Hmm. The trench and shovel that I used to use and dig, dig trenches and my tears would fall down out of, out of my eyes and from my face and hit my trench and shovel as I worshipped Jesus digging hmm. a trench. So even if you're not a minister, or even if, if you are a minister and you've forgotten where you came from, the reality is, is that His presence is available to you. You need Him. The sweetness of His presence is everything. And if you're moving around in your soul too much, and you don't get still and give Him His proper place, really to not be still is to not let Him be King. Amen. That's really the issue. When wow. you get still, then He takes His proper place. Wow. And when He takes His proper place, the kingdom trickles down. The glorious wow. authority of God is released in your life when you get still and let Him be who He is. He is the quickener. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit is the leader. That's right. The sons of God are those who are led by the Spirit. Mm. So being led by the Spirit is the issue of subjectivity. It's getting behind Him. And I'm not, I'm not moving until you move. And when you move... I, you'll, you'll move me. Hmm. But I wanted to, wanted to look at something here with talking about the ministers and Martha and Mary situation. Uh, as everybody knows, especially if you're a minister, that 
Martha was busy and distracted with many things and Mary was at his feet. The scripture is in, in uh, Luke 10, 38. It says, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all her preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all this work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered. You are worried and upset about so many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken from her. I'll tell you that if you're a minister, you're going to see a couple of these symptoms are in your life. And I'll do this really quickly. But you notice that when Martha's busy and she sees Mary worshiping the Lord, she says, Lord, do you not care? Let me ask you a question. Who's the most caring individual to ever step foot on this planet? Is it not God who became man to suffer and die a humiliating naked death on a tree for you? The first thing that will happen is you'll have a misconception of who the Lord is. Lord, do you not care? If, you, if, you, if you're not still, you'll begin to have a hazy vision of what God really is and who He really is. Look what else happens to her. She was distracted by all her preparations. Do you see the origin of the preparations were hers? They weren't the Lord's. They came from her. Another thing here is that um, the scripture says that Jesus says you're worried. The, the origin of worry is not being still. Mm. You're bothered or upset about so many things. This is a barometer for me in my life. Even with my wife and my family, ministry situations. If I feel myself getting bothered, it's, a, it's like a barometer for me to say, man, I need to sit at his feet. I have left stillness. And not been in the sweetness of his presence. So the reality is, is these are things that Jesus are show, showing us what happens to us if we turn into a Martha. The, another thing here that he says is um, that Mary has chosen the one thing that will not be taken away from her. And that is sitting at his feet, listening to his voice, and experiencing his presence. She's in his presence. If you're a minister... And you find yourself getting more bothered now than ever. You're more worried now than, than you ever have been. You're actually being run by worry. Worry about if the finances will come in. Worried about what's going to happen with different situations. Listen, these are all indicators for you. Come back to the feet of Jesus. Sit in His presence and listen to His voice. That will never be taken away from you. It's actually the way, the only route to becoming like Him. See, God is not really into what we can do. He's into what we can become. He didn't say that He predestined us to do the things that Jesus did. He says, no, He predestined us to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. He wants you to look like Jesus, not necessarily just to do stuff. And I'm telling you that that one route is sitting at His feet and listening to His voice. Martha's that are listening right now, Jesus loves Mary so much that even when Ma Martha and Mary say the same phrase to him, Lord, if you would have been here, he listens to Mary. Mary got a response from the Lord that Martha couldn't. In my life, what I'm going through uh, is I have to make sure that I continually yeah. seek the Lord in how to and what's next. Because I've seen so many, not just ministers, just Christians, they get a headline from the Lord, and then they cease to seek Him. They get busy with the headline. And as they're living their call or assignment or, or, or whatever, whatever it is, when they live it out, they start making decisions, and, and many times wrong ones, and, and, and sometimes even destructive ones. So you're saying that it's key that we always come back and sit at His feet and not get distracted with preparations. Yes. Yes. That, that, that's, that's amazing. I would even take it further and say that there is actually a place of living at His feet. Wow. So that the actual active life and the contemplative life are now one. Wow. This is sonship. This is what wow. Jesus did. Jesus didn't get filled up by His Father go pour out on the world, and then come back to be filled up by His Father. He remained under the faucet all wow. the time. And I'm telling you that 
the secret place will produce an abiding place. Wow. And the abiding place is fueled by the secret place. Wow. We should never substitute the abiding place for the secret place, but never the secret place for the abiding place. Amen. Because one produces the other. What God is after is that you would become prayer. Wow. And not be a great prayer, but become prayer. And I'm telling you, the more time you spend listening to His voice and sitting at His feet, the easier it will be to be Him in the world and be in mm. the mix of His divine flow throughout life. Mm. Yeah, the counsel of the Lord is the issue. Mm. Because the scripture tells us that the Spirit is the Spirit of counsel and might. Mm. So the might is accessed by the counsel mm -hmm. of the Lord. Do you remember what Jeremiah 23, what he rebuked the prophets for? They did not stand right. in the counsel of the Lord. You know the word stand there is also still. Mm -hmm. So they were not still in the counsel of the Lord. You know also the word there for counsel is actually company. Wow. You know, company, the company of God is the mm -hmm. Father, the Son, and the Spirit, this divine, glorious, trinity unity that is flowing in and satisfied completely with one another all the time. Wow. Jesus is completely filled, fulfilled with His Father, who is completely fulfilled with His Son, all by the Holy Spirit. Wow. They're wonderfully, interly connected all the time, completely satisfied with each other. And He, by His divine blood being spilled into the soil of this earth, has included you into this divine common life, wow. where you can communicate with and be involved in the sweet fellowship of the Godhead itself. Mm. This is hearing the counsel of the Lord. Mm. And that's why it produces might. Wow. Because standing and being still in the presence of the Lord will release the counsel wow. of the Lord. And that counsel of the Lord is hearing the great intimate conversations of the company of God. Wow. And that's why it releases might. Jesus is called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. Wow. It's Counselor first and then the might. If you seek might without counsel, man, you're going to get yourself in big trouble. Mm. Because my God, there is coming a day when every man will stand before God and give an account of his life, whether you're a minister or not. And, there's, and Jesus may look at many people, actually we know we have the promise or the, the guarantee in Matthew 7, that many will say on that day, many will say, not some, many will say in that day, did we not do all these wonderful things in your name? And Jesus looks at them in the actual Greek tense is this, I don't recognize you right now. Hmm. He might have recognized them in the past, hmm. but the place that they were in in wow. that time was this, I don't recognize you anymore. I used to know you, Wow. but I don't know you anymore. Remember the height from which you have fallen. That height was the glory of God. All have fallen short of the glory of God, which is first, above all, love for Jesus and interaction with His presence and experience of that wow. wonderful Godhead by the blood of Jesus that mm. drips down from the cross and creates a symphony for your heart. People of God, if, if that's you and you know that you need to get back to the Lord, yes. I, I just encourage you, don't wait. Get it back to the Lord. Get, get, get back to that place. Now, in, in just, just uh, one minute, uh, me and Eric, we're going to pray for the sick. Uh, the word of knowledge has already begun to, to flow. Um, and um, Eric wrote this book, Burn, Melting into the Image of Jesus. You need this book. We will send this book to you for free. You know, Eric, he came in the studio, and, um, and um, uh, that's not true. We actually talked uh, before the studio, and, and he said, you know what? I just want people to be blessed. Uh, I'll, I'll give my book to... Um, to whoever wants to, 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 to donate to Gospel Channel. So if you will donate any amount, any amount, even if you're a teenager and all you can do is 10 pounds, but any amount, any amount to Gospel Channel, you call the, the, the number on your screen, you sow into the Gospel and say, I will stand with Gospel Channel. I believe the Gospel Channel is, 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 is changing lives and, and reaching the lost. And we will send you this book because what Eric is talking about, you need it. That revelation is here in the book and, and, and you, can, you can feed uh, your spirit man by reading this book. So, so call the number on your screen, sow into the gospel and, and use some money for once on your spirit man. Now uh, we are going to pray for the sick. I see a, uh, a teenager, you're about... Uh, 16, 17 years old, you are a girl, you are wearing pink, and you are laying on your bed, and you are crying because your friends have hurt you so. And you are watching this, and you've actually watched for about 20 minutes now, 
and you, 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 you have this question in your heart, am I worthless? Is Jesus real? <laughs> and that's why you've kept watching for an answer, but really it's been the Holy Spirit drawing you to, <laughs> to, to, to keep watching. And I'm, I'm here to tell you that, of course, you're not worthless. Mm -hmm. don't, don't measure your worth on what people are saying, okay? God created you to be exactly who you are, and you are a caring person. You are talented, and He's going to use you. Just give your life to Jesus right now. Yes. Just throw your life upon the cross and yes. say, yes, I'll be a Christian. Yes, I will seek the face of God because you got to understand he's not far away what you're feeling your inside you're feeling like like a uh, warmth is going through your body and and you don't know why you're getting all emotional that's a touch from God and and this is the beginning of your experience and and really a a life with Christ but you've got to make that decision to say you know what I will not live my life for myself yes. I will live it for Jesus and you know what you are needed. You are needed in the kingdom of God. You are needed. And, and just think that God would point you out out of all these people. Just think that God would point you out. He loves you and He's got a, a, a mighty plan for you. Now, we, let's, let's pray for the people, Eric. Sure, yeah. Let's pray. Um, whatever you need, whatever you need, just stretch your hands towards the screen, whatever you need, we believe that God can heal you. I just want to encourage you, once um, we had a broadcast on, on Gospel uh, Channel here and I mentioned a lot of words of revelation, and people actually called in and testified with those exact uh, things I called out and it was so amazing because I thought someone had actually written a transcript of, of what I said on, on these prayer requests but so so believe that when we call out your condition that you will be healed. So put your hand on your sick uh, uh, place, wherever it be, is, if it's your neck, your back, your heart, wherever, and as the word of knowledge flows, mm. we believe that God is going to heal you. Yes. Amen. Yes. Jesus, I ask you, Lord, anyone who calls upon your name, I ask you, Lord, to heal their bodies. Yes, Lord. And to give them a visitation, Lord. I ask you, Lord, for uh, the people calling on you to, to have mercy on them. Lord, I ask yes. you, Lord, this is the day of salvation. And this is the day of triumph. This is the day of triumph. Yes. I, I, I see a woman. You have your, your hand on, on your hip. Not only is going to God heal your hip pain, but, but I see that you're alone with two kids. And, and God is going to do a miracle in your life. And, and you've been praying and, and you've not been, been steady in the church. God is saying, uh, get steady and He's going to lead you to the right people and, and, and lead you into ministry. And Eric, if there's anything you yeah. just interrupt and yeah. you just come with a word. I see depression. That's a condition that you've been struggling with. And right now, in the name of Jesus, I believe there's multiple cases of it. I can feel it right now, even as I'm saying it. That uh, you know that you, you, deal, you deal deeply with depression. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I break that power over you. In Jesus' name, I break it. I command it to be broken by the name of Jesus and the power of the cross. In Jesus' name, yes. I cast that devil out. Yes. I say, in Jesus' name, I rebuke yes. you, depression, spirit of depression yes. and oppression. Crushing yes. people's hearts. And I release right now the oil of joy right now into your life. The oil of gladness. The oil that comes from heaven. In Jesus' name, I say life and peace and joy yes, unspeakable and yes. full of glory be released in yes. your life right now. In Jesus' name. Yes. Take it in the name of Jesus. Yes. Sweet oil be released right now. Yes. Every home, children, there's yes. a child that's been struggling with yes. this. In Jesus' name. And the parents have wondered what's wrong mm. with, our, with our child. In Jesus' name, I say claim this for your child. Right now, we release the oil of joy over your child right Thank now. You. That little girl, that little boy. In the name of Jesus, joy, Thank fix you. that issue. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus name. I, I see a minister. You're a man. And... Um, 
you are so discouraged right now because your walk with Christ is, is, is not, yeah. not what it used to be, but you're, you're finding yourself in a situation where you don't know uh, where to turn, you don't know which direction to go. And I'm asking the Lord right now to, to place in your heart uh, what decisions that you need to make. But you need to get back to the Lord. He is calling you. You need to get back to that place of restoration. Yes. And I'm going to pray for restoration right now because you are broken. And, and, and I see the brokenness that you've gone through. It's, it's, it's severe. And you do not know how to get up by yes. yourself. Jesus, I ask you, Lord, with your power to raise your servant up again in the name of Jesus yes. by your power. In the name of Jesus, I command healing in your life and, and all the wounds to heal. Yes. Holy Spirit, we just ask you, Lord, Jesus. to just sweetly restore him, to empower him, and to use him mightily again, yes. Lord, in the name of Jesus. New oil of refreshing. Yes. I see women now. You, you are agreeing because you want the new oil. You want restoration yeah. because you've been broken. Anyone who's been broken, Eric, would you pray yeah. for them right now? Yes. Anyone who's been broken, just yes, stretch your yes. hands out towards the screen. We're going to believe with yes. you right now that God is going to restore you so that He can use you in the next yes. season mightily Jesus. and that you're not going gonna, to gonna be Jesus. dealing with old in the name of Jesus. Yes, every wound, Jesus. I put oil and wine over it right now in Jesus' name. Even as Mark 10 when that man was found with all the wounds, his, they used oil and wine to heal the wounds. Right now, I speak to those wounds, and we, by the Holy Ghost, put oil and wine upon your wounds right now, that you would be healed on the inside. Those, those vulnerable places that no one else can touch, no doctor can help you there. In Jesus' name, you've been, you've been rejected and betrayed by a man. You've been, um, you've been molested even. There's been many hurts that have caused deep wounds. And in the name of Jesus, we say the release of oil and wine right now into your life. Wine be released and oil be released right now to heal those wounds that are so deep in Jesus' name. Well, thank you uh, for watching. And Eric, thank you so much for being here. Thanks, man. Um, this is so wonderful. And, and, and we, could, we, we could continue, but we have to move on. In just a second, Brother Eric has is, is, is got a guest, and it's going to be wonderful. But we just want to encourage you to seek the Lord. Yes. Life is not worth living without Him. You cannot run on old oil. You have to. You have to come to the source and let Him renew your oil and give yes. you a fresh. Amen. Thank Amen. you Thank so you. much, Eric. Thank you were just a blessing. I hope you will, you will come another day, will you? Yes, I will. Will you? you? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, thank you so much. And in just a second, we'll have a Brother Eric. Uh, so stay tuned. Uh, it will just be a short break for just a couple of minutes. God bless you, and we'll see you in just a little bit.